Hi, this message is for all the teenagers out there. My name is Peter Dow from King School in Ostruda. And if your parents are watching this, don't go away. This is for the teenagers. Now, you teenagers out there, I know what you're going through. At school, you're asked to pick up a book, open the book, look at the pretty pictures, fill in the exercises, do the listening, look at the picture, fill in the exercises, doing the listening. But you're asking yourself, but I want to speak English. I don't want to keep looking at pictures, doing the exercises and doing the listening. So over the years, I noticed an increase in the number of teenagers that come to me for learning the language. Now, the reason they come to me is because I am a fully trained Callum Method teacher. I learned in London and I've been using it for the last 20 odd years. And so I'm pretty good at what I do. In fact, I'm very good at what I do. Now, what I do is, I break down barriers. That means that people that come to me who are scared to speak, shy to speak, or literally have a barrier or a block. My job is to get rid of that block, is to give them confidence to speak. And I do that by using a very structured method called the Callum method. Now, you might be asking me, teenagers, what is this wonderful method that's gonna help me to speak? Well, the funny thing is, I get people that come to me who are very shy. And the Callum method is great for breaking barriers because you don't have a choice. In my lessons, you have to speak. But it isn't just speaking anything, it's actually speaking on a structured script. For example, this is book five, and the first word on here is chat. So what happens is, I have my students in the group, and I just say, okay, everybody, repeat the word chat. And then I say, repeat online because that's the second word in the book. So the students can have the book open just to see the word if they want to, or if they prefer, they can close the book. And then I give some examples of the words. For example, I say, I prefer chatting with my friends online rather than on the phone because it's easier for me. Now, what happens is then I will ask a student, for example, I will say, Agnieszka, do you prefer chatting with your friends on, online or on the phone? And Agnieszka will say, oh, I prefer chatting with my friends online. And I might say, why? And they say, well, because I don't have time to talk on the phone. So straight away, the students are speaking. Now, the beauty of this method is that everything is written in the books. There's no pretty pictures. There's no grammar exercises. It's just learning to speak, speak, and speak. And then what we do is, at the end of the lessons, we always repeat and repeat and repeat. So the students very quickly get used to the type of questions they will be asked, they get used to my accent, and they're also in a group with other teenagers who may also be suffering from this shyness or this barrier. The students that are more confident and can speak will motivate the others to want to speak as well. But the one thing in my group is there is no pressure. I am speaking all the time with the students. For example, the question, do you prefer chatting with your friends on the phone or online? What I do is I repeat the question twice and then I start the student off. For example, I would say, do you prefer chatting with your friends on the phone or online? Agnieszka, I prefer chatting with my friends. And then she'll say, oh, on the phone. Why Agnieszka? Well, because I like to hear their voice. And then on to the next question, which is, how often do you go online to look at your email? And I will say, for example, David, and he will say, oh, and I'm speaking. I'll say, I go online every day, every week, every month to look at my email. So the student has no choice, but they have to speak. And so we go through the book. We do lesson by lesson. But what we do is we actually repeat the lessons the next time. So for example, if on Monday I have taught lesson number 61, <clears throat> on Wednesday, I go back to 61, but the books will be closed and we do the same questions again. So you're repeating, repeating and repeating. This boosts the confidence of the students because there's no surprises and no shocks. And what I do is I take the lesson at a speed that suits them. Now, a lot of people ask me about grammar. Does the Calvin method teach grammar? Yes, it certainly does teach grammar, of course. But the grammar is not the most important part of learning a language. The most important part is to be able to speak, 
use new words and have good pronunciation. So, for example, in lesson 66, <clears throat> it says, and I will say to the students, okay, please repeat, past continuous, and they will all repeat, past continuous. And I will say, please repeat, I was speaking. And the students will repeat, I was speaking. And then I will introduce. We use the present continuous for an action that is in progress now. For example, I am speaking English now. In my lessons, I use actions so that people can actually see some kind of action to remember what I'm saying. And then the explanation would be, we use the past continuous for an action that was in progress at a particular time in the past. For example, I was speaking English at this time yesterday. If I say I was sleeping at four o'clock this morning, it means that I was asleep at four o'clock and I woke up after four o'clock. So at four o'clock, I was in the middle of a period of sleeping. So there's a short explanation about the grammar structure that we do. Then what we do, we ask the student a question. For example, I would say, Dorota, when do we use the present continuous? And Dorota will say, we use the present continuous for an action that is in progress now. And then I will say, Adrian, give me an example, please. And Adrian will say, I am speaking English now. But all the time I'm speaking with them, they can repeat after me. There's no embarrassment, there's no shyness. I'm speaking all the time. And that's how the grammar works. And every next lesson, we go back and repeat it again and again. So that's how the method works. Now, halfway through the lesson, or over halfway through the lesson, what we do is we do a reading. Now, the reason for this is because, of course, when you learn a language, as you know, when you learn Polish, the first thing you do is you listen to your mother and repeat. I'm not your mother, but I'm a teacher, but you repeat, of course. And then, of course, you learn to read. So I would say to, for example, Agnieszka, please turn to lesson 61 and start reading. Agnieszka will read, chat online. Do you prefer chatting with your friends on the phone or online? I prefer chatting with my friends on the phone. So we then read from the book. And at the end of the lesson, there's always the dreaded dictation. We have to do some writing, you know. You've got to write in English, but not too much. So in the book, there is a dictation. And what happens is I read the dictation. For example, dictation 36. If somebody wants, if somebody wants to buy my motorbike, if somebody wants to buy my motorbike, and the students are, of course, writing it down on their notebooks. And then at the end of the dictation, which is about 50 words, they can open their books and check the dictations. Now, all I need to do is ask them, how many mistakes did you make? This is just to let me know if everything is okay. If they make a lot of mistakes, over 10, then generally I repeat the dictation the next lesson. If it's under 10 mistakes, we move on and do the next dictation, the next lesson. It's very simple and there's no stress. So that's how the Kala method works. Now, who is it good for? Well, let's face it, more and more teenagers are learning English because English is now probably the most used second language in Poland and definitely it's the number one language spoken in the world. And teenagers these days, they watch Netflix, they go on social media, HBO Go, listen to music. When I first came to Poland, English was just something they had to learn in the class and for exams. Now it's for real life situations, they travel more, but speaking is one of the most important parts of learning a language. And also when they watch Netflix, they often find the words I have taught them will come up in their next Netflix series. And they say, Pete, that word you taught me last lesson, I saw it on Netflix or I heard it in a song. Now, that's the beauty of the Callum method. Now, we go at the speed that the students are comfortable with. And if I feel that they're not learning anything or they haven't understood something, the next lesson I will do more repeating. If I think they learn everything and they understand everything, then we move forward. I've been doing this for over 20 years, so I know how students are doing. I can tell by the answers and the way they look at me, how they are progressing. I'm very, very good at the Callum method. I'm very good at teaching it. And I know how well the students are doing. Now, one thing with kids is, as you know, 
that they don't like to talk too much, probably even in their own language. If you ask a child, how was school today? They'll go, love show. You know, it's like that with most teenagers. I've got teenagers. But with the color method, it's really great because they actually have to give long sentences. There's no choice. You can't hide away because I'm pulling the words out of their mouths. But the beauty is it gives them amazing confidence. And in a two or three lessons, four lessons, I've found students that come to me at the beginning that are quiet, they don't want to speak, but slowly, slowly, they get this confidence because there's no surprises, there's no shocks, it's Peter all the time, just gently encouraging them to speak. And to their amazement, at the end of two or three months, they're speaking, we're having conversations. So this is how the Callum method works. Now, if you have a mature exam in English, or you're doing the advanced level, you will have to do a speaking exam. So picture the scenario. You've had one year with me, firing questions at you, helping you to speak. At the end of it, and you go and do a mature exam, you have somebody asking you some simple questions, and you're going, what, come on. Peter's been firing very difficult questions at me for over a year, this is easy. And that's true, because after my course, a lot of my students, thankfully, they send me messages, thanks Pete, I got 80, I got 90, I got 100% in my English exam, thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's what encouraged me to teach more teenagers. And the more I taught them, the more the word spread, the more came to my groups. Now, I love what I do, and I love seeing the success of teenagers. They are the future of this country. And my heart is in what I'm doing, and I do everything I can to help them. Now. One of the words that people don't like to hear are homework. Yeah, teenagers hate that word. Homework, uh, in my lessons, are simply, if you have time, it's good for the teenagers just to prepare for the next lesson. Just learn the key words. They can translate them if they want to. At the back of the book, you have the Polish vocabulary, with the, uh, the English words with the Polish vocabulary. It's very simple. So if they could spend just 10 minutes just writing down or translating the key words that they don't know, it helps them during the lesson. During the first time that we teach, they can have the books open if they want to. Some choose to, some choose not to. But what they cannot do, they cannot read the answers to me. They must look at me. And if they don't, I always say, Agnieszka, look at me when you're speaking. The book's there to help them. They can look down, look up at me, just to be more confident. But all the time, I'm there to help them. Another thing I do, I correct by imitation. And how I do that is, for example, the word through. For example, what would happen if I threw a stone at the window? As you see, I'm using an action. So they see that action with the word to throw. And I say to Dorota, what would happen if I threw a stone at the window? And Dorota might say, if you threw a stone at the window, and I said, Dorota, not through, that's telling her her mistake, is through. Please repeat, through, if I threw a stone at the window. And then Dorota would say, if I threw a stone at the window, the window would break. Now, English pronunciation can be quite difficult. I know, particularly the TH sound, the th. It's a bit like me speaking Polish with ch, ch, and ch. It's very difficult, but after a lot of practice, you'll be surprised. Very soon that tongue comes down and they're able to pronounce the words perfectly. Now, obviously, at the end of the course, a lot of them will have my accent, which I'm very proud of. So, the Callum method is perfect for speaking, a uh, bit of a dictation, obviously listening, because they're always English in the, in the room. I'm speaking non-stop, and they hear the answers from the other kids. And uh, the homework, apart from checking the book, is obviously watch Netflix, tell me what you're watching, what do you think of it, and uh, HBO Go, listen to music. So. All you teenagers out there, if you are a bit tired of doing the traditional sit down, fill in the gaps, look at the pretty pictures, and you want something different, and you want something that will help you to speak, I do recommend the Callum method. Now, come and see me, don't bite, I'm very calm, and I will help you decide which group to go into. Now, this, whatever group you go into, we have a couple of teenage groups, you'll be with other kids your age, and probably you will know them from your school. Because over the years, I have got more and more teenagers coming to me
to help them to speak. And like I said, I'm really good at what I do. So come and see me, come and talk to me. I'll show you the books. I'll show you how it works. You don't have to have a conversation with me. You can just nod your head. You can go, yes, no. But you know, but what surprises me also is at the end of every book, there's a little, little test. And even the quietest students that come to me who very rarely say too much, but they go through the method and they learn. When I give them a test, they get 70, 80%. We should never underestimate what kids have in their heads. Sometimes it's a lot more than we really know. So, this is for all you teenagers out there. Come and see Peter. Come and talk to me. Come to my groups. If you don't like it, you don't pay. You don't stay, you don't pay. So, this is the Callum Method, perfect for all you students out there, all you teenagers who watch Netflix, listen to music, HBO Go, travel, have to do exams, and you want to speak is perfect for you. You know where to find me, Shihod Nisteri at King's School of English. I'm waiting for you. You can messenger me if you want to. A lot of you are on my Facebook. Send me a message, come and see me. Like I say, I don't bite. And I'll show you what to do. And in the first lesson, we go very slowly, very carefully. We take it at your speed. I don't want to frighten you. I don't want to shock you. So, whatever you're doing, enjoy your day. I hope you liked the video. I hope you understood it. Talk to your parents. Tell them you want to learn the Callum method. Have a great day. Bye-bye.